morning, all. The recording has started. Good morning, and welcome to Iron Shoppings Iron, our interactive Bible study conference line, a safe and sacred place where we gather from the north, the south, the east, and the west to learn, to study, and grow in the Word of God. Workmen's that need not to be ashamed, but ones that can rightly divide the Word of Truth. This is Minister Brinder, your facilitator from Northern California, and we're leader led by Pastor Douglas Banks out of Columbia, Maryland. We are so thankful and grateful that you're here with us today as we continue our study in the journey with the Messiah. This is the Tommy Hibble series, and we're in uh, lesson number one out of your Bibles. It would be uh, Matthew chapter number two, 19 through 23. We're going to be reading about expect to wait indefinitely. This morning, uh, Pastor is still with his sister in New York. Uh, she is resting comfortably. They're still not sure what's all going on. We're going to continue to keep her lifted up in prayer. And this morning, we will be led by Anne from Houston, Texas, in prayer. And also, Sister Karen out of West Sacramento will be continuing with our lesson. Expect to wait indefinitely. Good morning, Ann. Good morning, Minister Brenda. And good morning to all my sisters and brothers on this beautiful, beautiful morning. Let us go to God in prayer. I'd like to read a scripture from Psalms uh, 119, 103, and 104. And it says, how sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. I gain understanding from your precepts. Therefore, I hate every wrong path. And that is the word of God. Father, we come today just to thank you, Father, for blessing us and allowing us another day to get it right with you, Father God. We thank you for another day to be a vessel in the building of your kingdom, servant servant father to you just thank you for this day thank you and for another day that we can just tell somebody about the mighty god that we serve father a god that stands with us through thick and thin and father we thank you we thank you for being a god that brings light to the dark world that we live in father god we just thank you and your holy bible says your word is the lamp unto our feet and the light unto our path. And Father God, that word, that word that was the, there in the beginning when you created the heavens and the earth, Father God, we thank you. Your word that said, let there be, and it was, let there be light, let there be water. Father God, you created it all. Let it be land and vegetation. Father God, we just a word. But you didn't stop there, Father, because you, you said, let us create man in our, in our likeness, in our image. And you created us. And not only, Father God, we thank you for creating us, but you blessed us. Father God, you blessed us then, the same God that keeps blessing us each and every day of our lives. And Father God, we just have to say thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for caring for us, Father God. Thank you for the invitation to spend eternity with you in heaven. Father God, we just say hallelujah. We say glory to your name, Father God. We just thank you for loving us. And we thank you for your word, Father God, that was left on record. Your word, your holy word that guides us, that grows us in spirit, soul, and body, Father God. Your word that was sent down from heaven. And we just praise you, Father God. We just thank you. We love you today, Father God. We cannot live this life without you. So we continue to lift you up and praise your holy name. Father God, and as Minister Brenda said, we continue to pray for Reverend Harris and Pastor Doug and the entire family. We pray for everyone that who God has been left our care 
into their hands. We pray for them, Father God. Let them be godly people, Father God, and let them have you direct them as they go about. We pray for everyone on this line, Father God, for health and strength and for love of our mankind. We praise you, we love you, and we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And good morning, Sister Carolyn. Amen, amen. Thank you, uh, Sister Ann, for that beautiful prayer, lifting up each and every one of us and lifting up Reverend Harris and Pastor. And we'd uh, also like to lift up, as you said, those that are caring for her, that they find out, you know, they're running tests. Let the tests reveal what is going on in Reverend Harris's body that they may prescribe correctly whatever uh, she may need by way of therapy, uh, medicine or therapy. And uh, so she can come out of that hospital so she can get back on the line and, and sing with us <laughs> and pray with us. We thank you uh, for each and every person. Uh, who has joined us this morning. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Uh, as Minister Brenda said uh, this morning, we are, our study this morning is, I'll start just a moment, waiting indefinitely, expect to wait indefinitely. And that comes to us from chapter two of Matthew verses 19 through uh, 23. Yesterday, uh, Sister Phyllis took us through expect to be opposed strongly. And uh, we had a very uh, lively and good conversation about that because we know that it's, as, as she said yesterday, when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ, there's a bullseye on our back. Sometimes on our front too, but he his job is to uh, throw us off, to get us to think on things that are different, to get us to do things that are not the will of God, and because uh, of sin that has because that's not how it started out, and we all know that, but because of the fall, sin entered into the world, and that opened the door for all manner of things like. You know, we've all heard the story of Pandora's box. She opened that box and all types of things came out of that box that were not the best uh, for us, not the best way for us to think, to walk, to talk, to do. And that was uh, Satan's whole scheme to get us to follow him. So, and as we... Uh, uh, continue. I was listening to a Bible study last night, and uh, a former pastor of mine, she was saying that when she got saved uh, her, and really started walking with the Lord, truly and honestly, then people began to talk about her. They began to say, oh, she thinks she this and she thinks she that. But again, that is being uh, opposed by those that we, you know, we kicked it with for quite a while, and then we come and we start talking about the love of Jesus and what he can do to bring us up out of the uh, muck and the mire, and they still want to part. They still want to, you know, do this and that, but the Lord will call them when he, when he will, and that will be, uh, that will be their, uh, their salvation. Because he wants us, as we all know, but each and every one of us to be saved. Now, we went through uh, to expect to be led incrementally. Pastor took us through that. And as I said, uh, Sister Phyllis took us through expect to be opposed strongly. And now we come to expect to wait indefinitely. And when uh, Pastor asked me to do this, I I kind of uh, chuckled to myself because uh, I went to school for a lot of different things, but it was mostly uh, in the healthcare field. Unfortunately, I never really worked in the healthcare field the way I wanted to. But uh, 
when Minister Myra gave her uh, talk the other day, and then something pricked inside of me, and then uh, Sharon Brandon came on, and she said some things. It my 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 spirit was pricked once again. So um, what I wanted to do is what I am planning to start finally in right now, because she said God doesn't care how old you are. He will use you at whatever age he chooses to use you. And so that was my waiting in definitely. At the top of page 14, it says, we wait on God. We never know for how long. Neither does Joseph, but Herod finally dies. After his death, an angel of the Lord appears in a dream to Joseph, and we find that uh, uh, in 2 and 19. What does the angel tell Joseph in 2 and 20? Does uh, anyone have that? Good morning, Mr. Good morning. Good morning. Go ahead, Deborah. All right. Okay. okay. Thank you. It says, arise, take the young child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel for those who thought in the young child's life are dead. God's word. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Yeah, he told Joseph to get up and take the young child and uh, to Egypt, flee with the young child and his mother to Egypt. And as was pointed out uh, yesterday, he didn't say your child. He said the child. And I was surprised to learn, too, that when the wise man did come to uh, worship at uh, the, the, the newborn Jesus, I was surprised to learn that he was a toddler. I did not, you know, because we see all the scenes of him in a manger. And he's a baby. And a, you know, in my mind, he was a newborn baby. But this child was one or uh, two years old. When Joseph returns, he learns the new ruler of Judea is Herod's son, the ruthless Archelaus. Joseph is afraid to go to Judea. So he and his family go to live in a city called Nazareth, which is in Galilee. Now, uh, I guess Joseph was afraid to go to um, Judea because this 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 uh, king, he was King Herod's son, who was Archelaus. So he was. I'm sure a fear that he was probably the same type of person that his dad was, ruthless, evil, wanting to greedy and all those other things. So he he decides not to go there. Uh but he did go on to Nazareth, which is about fifty five north miles north of Jerusalem, and we find that in chapter two, verses twenty one and twenty three. This small town of around a thousand people was the hometown of Joseph and Mary, and we find that in Luke. This fulfills what was spoken by the prophets that the Messiah be called a a Nazarene in Matthew two and twenty three C. Can someone get that and and uh, read that for us, please? This, uh, uh, Chapter 2, verse 23c, or just the whole verse. This uh, is Gloria. Yeah. I have it in the King James, and it says, And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. The word of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Now, and um, I need to backtrack just a little bit. When um, I did this lesson, when we began this lesson of waiting indefinitely, two people came to my mind uh, about waiting indefinitely. The first was Moses, 
and the second one was Caleb. We all know the story. Uh, Moses was on, Moses fleed from Egypt because he killed someone who was uh, fighting or beating one of uh, his Hebrew brothers. And he killed that person and was found out was that someone saw him. And so he had to flee because he didn't want the punishment of Pharaoh. So Moses was on the backside of the desert attending to his father-in-law's sheep when the Lord spoke to him from the burning bush. The Lord gave him his assignment to lead the people out of Israel. And how old was Moses when he uh, get when the Lord gave him this assignment mm -hmm. to lead the people out of Israel? I understand Moses was in his 80s. Yeah, he was 80 years old. 80 years old, thank you. But Moses, at 80, was still straight and strong, and his mind was as sharp and as clear as it was when he was in his 20s. And that's what pricked me as well. I'm not 80 yet, but I'm hitting on, I'm hitting on that door. <laughs> so, no, I'm not too old uh, to still be used by the Lord. And that was my my thinking. Well, my time has passed. There's nothing I can do. But he reminds me constantly that, yes, there is. Uh, there are still things that you, know, you can do. And how about Caleb? Caleb was 85 when he spoke to, jo uh, when he spoke to Joshua about the land that the Lord promised him. He, uh, and we can find that in uh, uh, Joshua 14 and 12. Can someone get that for us, please, and, and read that scripture? Hello? Joshua 14. And verse 12. Looking for it. Okay. <laughs> I didn't hear any I didn't hear any breathing or anything. Yeah, I can't even find my glasses, so <laughs> Oh bless your heart. I understand that. Yeah. This is Cynthia. This is I have Joshua. fourteen and twelve. Go ahead, Cynthia. Thank Cynthia. you. Yes, Joshua fourteen twelve says, Now therefore give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakim were there and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me and I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. Amen. Amen. And uh, 13 says, And Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of mm, Jephunneh as an inheritance. So yes, so again, these people are well up in years. And uh, Caleb said, I can still drive those people out because this is the land that the Lord promised me and I will drive them out. And scripture tells us that uh, Caleb wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. There were no if ands, buts about it. He was as you know because he was one of the 12 spies that went out and he and joshua were the only two that came back and said look we got this we can take this but after they gave their report everyone else was so fearful that these people are so much larger than us they 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 will overrun us we can't do anything against these people we look like little lands but if the lord gives us which he does not an if, but when the Lord gives us, he tells us all the time by his word, I am with you. I will be with you. There is nothing you can't do as long as you look to me for your strength, for your health, for your might, for your food, your drink, your clothing. He kept those people in the wilderness 40 years. Nothing wore out. And that was a miracle right there, but nobody, uh, because they were murmuring and complaining, they didn't want to do this, they didn't want to do that. And yes, I have been guilty myself of murmuring at times. 
and complaining. But praise the Lord. <laughs> when he talks to me, it's like, okay, Karen, okay, let's go. Let's, let's move on. And, you know, I like the little, um, the little uh, cartoon here on the uh, top of page 14 where it says, take a number, God will be with you. I thought that was so, uh, so cute. Uh, continuing on, being called a Nazarene refers to the Messiah's despised character. In Matthew's day, people didn't expect much from Nazareth. To be called a Nazarene was like being called a country, bu country bumpkin or a redneck. That's why Nathaniel, I'm sorry, country bumpkin or a redneck today. Nazareth had a military post with a reputation of being rough. That's why Nathaniel asked Philip the question, the question and John 146D. Does anyone have uh, that answer? Yes, this is oh, it says, can anything good come from there? Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, the author relates how the people of Jesus' day referred to the citizens of Nazareth, of, of Nazareth as nothings or nobodies, or as we would say today, rednecks country bumpkins. These terms are derogatory and implies that that they are learned and more sophisticated, that they are not learned or sophisticated and should not expect anything from these people who are from the projects, as I thought about it, or the wrong side of town, or those folks who live across the tracks. We've all heard these terms about people who don't live where we live or don't live where um, uh, the rich and famous live or don't have what they have. They're, they're, they're not, uh, they're savages. They're, they don't mean anything. They are beneath us. This type of thinking has been used over and over again by the enemy to ensure that only a certain group of people are entitled or deserve the finer things life has to offer. This lack of respect has likely uh, has like is likely due to an unpolished dialect, um, and I liken that to ebonics. You know how we have people who that term became uh, popular some years ago. Speaking of the dialect in which some of us who are black communicate with each other, or a lack of culture. They probably prefer Chopin to Muddy Waters. So this is, you know, they're saying that these people don't mean anything. They don't know what they're doing. They, they don't have what we have. They are not wealthy. The, uh, they had a modest income. They were, it was a working class city. And this is what they did, but they did not have the finer things of life. The Son of God made his home in the despised town of Nazareth for nearly 30 years. The term Nazarene was used to shame and belittle someone. As we said, uh, as is, uh, Roger said earlier, country bumpkins and, and, uh, not learned or not uh, polished in the way they spoke, in the way they dressed, in the way they, uh, what types of food that they ate. Jesus being a Nazarene was one of the main reasons the educated and sophisticated priests, scribes, and Sadducees and Pharisees were so insulted when he would try to teach them and even condemn them. However, this is a fulfillment of what prophecy in Isaiah 53 and A. Does someone have that? I do. I got a Tyra. Uh-huh. He is despised. Oh, this is in the um, King James Version. He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrow. And acquainted with grief, and 
we hid hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. James Virgin, amen. Thank you, thank you, amen. Mm -hmm. Yes, because he was from uh, Nazareth. So him being from that city, they didn't want to have anything to do with him, let alone him saying that he was he was the son of God, and the and him coming out of a poor neighborhood. How many times have people come out of poor neighborhoods that we can think of, you know, in 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 our lives that came out of poor neighborhoods, pulled themselves up by their bootstraps and became something. Uh, they worked hard at something. They they became rich. There were immigrants who came over from Germany and Ireland and different places came to America when America was young, younger, and uh, started businesses, uh, started movie uh, corporations, and started food and transportation. These people were from different countries. They were poor when they came over here, a lot of them. They were uneducated as far as uh, American standards were. They came over here and they made money. Nikola Tesla made money. He, I forgot where he's from, but he came over here. He and um, Edison were in, um, they were in battle to see who could come up with the better form of electricity to light our homes with. Tesla has, and we all know Tesla has a car that people are buying left and right. And so people came from different areas. They had the prejudices against people who did not look like them. The Indians were the original inhabitants of this land. But again, people came in and took what they had and pushed them out. They don't want to, they want to lord it over people who don't have what they consider to be the right stuff. So Jesus coming from Nazareth, they believe that he is not who he says he is. He is a charlatan. We're not going to listen to him. But if the fact remains, yes, he was the son of God. He is the son of God. And he came to do what no man on earth could do. And that was forgive us. Forgive us. And as Sister Anne said in her prayer, love us. Watch over us. Keep us as we go about our day to day, even when we're asleep. Doesn't matter when we're awake or asleep. If those who love Jesus coming and are looking forward to uh, Jesus Christ and are looking forward to his coming, we will be, we will reign with him in the next life, our next life, as Pastor says on the other side of Jordan. I love that. This prophecy summarizes the term Nazarene. Jesus is now in Nazareth, but there will be years of waiting until God's will is fully known. So uh, how old was he when he started his ministry? When Jesus started his ministry? 30 years old. 30? Okay, thank you. Most of the time, we think we are waiting on God, but it's really the other way around. God waits on us to become the people he wants us to become. And that tells us that he wants, he wants us to become the people that he, that he has designed us to be. And we do that by praying and listening to the word of God. So, when doing God's will, expect to be led incrementally, piece by piece, little bit by little bit. Expect to be opposed strongly because there will be those who talk about you unmercifully and to wait indefinitely for him, for his promise to you to manifest itself. Thank you. Uh, do we have any questions or comments? <laughs>
Good morning, Sister Karen. This is Cynthia. Mm-hmm. I was just wondering, is it known how much time had passed from when Joseph and Mary went to Egypt until the death of Harold? How long they had to wait in Egypt? Is it known? No, I didn't find that particular uh, information, uh, Cynthia. I just know that he was a toddler. Okay. Uh, but he was, a, he was probably, uh, he was older, I guess, by the time, uh, an older toddler by the time he left, but I'm not sure. Okay, thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Hi, Karen. Good morning. Uh, Deborah. I'll, I'll go after you. I'll go after you, Sister Deborah. Yes, Deborah. Thank you, Shani. I think that was Shani. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, the, um, I did not know that uh, Jesus was almost two years old either. And and it's something to wish that I believe a lot of people don't know that Jesus was almost two when um, when they were looking for him to die, um, to kill him. And um, basically because they have all those, um, uh, uh, every Christmas, every time they have a, a show or a event for that, they always have the manger and the baby. And so we all do it that this Jesus was a newborn baby. He was just born and the the uh, the, the uh, wise men found him and all that in the manger, but it wasn't even in the manger. So I was like, Oh my God. So thank you, thank you. This this is this is going deep into the word and so we can know for ourselves, you know, basically, you know, instead of knowing from the world, basically, even if in the churches or whatever the case may be. I'm not, you know, putting the church in the world, but I'm just saying that it's like, you know, we were taught wrong all of our lives about this. And that is because we did not deeply go into the book, into the word for ourselves. And I'm so excited and I thank God that we are doing that. You know, because we're really getting revelation. We're getting what it is, the truth. So thank you, guys, and thank God. Hey, Karen. Excuse me, Karen. Yes. Yeah, before you go, before we go, uh, uh, Herod died in 4 AD, so which means that Jesus was four years old. Four years old. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Deacon Tony. All right. Yes. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you yeah, so much. I just want to double click. Oh, yes. Please, go ahead. Go ahead, Sister Karen. So I just, I just want to double click on what Sister Deborah just said. This mm-hmm. is such a lovely study. And I didn't know that Jesus was four years old when Herod died. Is that correct? Yes. As Deacon okay. just told us, yes. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. Okay. And what is, I missed, what is the significance of Jesus? being 30? Is that when he was called by God to what what exactly happened when Jesus was 30? That's when he actually started his ministry. When he was 30 years old. Yes. Okay. And then he died at 33. Yes. So it's so interesting to me to think that by the study of the word I learned that all of Jesus' miracles and his good work only happened in three years. Mm-hmm. And you think about how the world can literally be transformed in only three years. That to me is just like mind blowing. Yes, yes, it was turned upside down in just three years' time. Yes, <laughs> you are right. You know, and we 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 look at as it was traditions that we were going on. The baby Jesus was. Uh, in a manger, they tra- and you know they traveled to him and they kneeled before him and he was a baby. He was in a manger. All our songs and uh, as Deborah said, Christmas plays and whatnot depict him as a baby in a manger, but he was still God. Not you know, but being one or two years old, that was something that was never said. And I appreciate learning exactly, you know, because, and as she said too, 
we didn't know because we didn't go. We depended on others to give us our information. And it's so important. Yes, we may get information, but it's important for us to dig ourselves, to do our own studies, to find out what's going, to find out what was truly happening and going on. This is Karen, this is Sister Veronica. Yeah, and I am just, you know, I just, I just love this uh, particular part of the the lesson because it shows us that Jesus is familiar with me. It, he's familiar with you. Doesn't matter what part of uh, life we are, we are in, whether we live in the affluent neighborhood or we come from the uh, over the tracks or wherever. Jesus came. He said in His word, He came to seek and save that which was lost. That was for the uh, nation of Israel, and that also applies to us because we were lost. And yeah. so I love the fact that he didn't have a problem being obedient to his father, stepping out of glory where riches untold, to come down and go through every phase of life from the conception, being conceived in Mary's womb. He went through every phase of, of life that we experienced, so he's familiar with everything about us. And he didn't leave anyone out. So as the uh, people were thinking they were high and lifted up, they needed Jesus more than the poor people did. Because in their mind, in their mind, they thought they had something they didn't have. They had the education. They had the books. They had the history. They had it all. Yet they did not recognize the Savior of the world. Isaiah, Jeremiah, different books of the Bible telling about him coming. And so they were so as my grandfather used to say, educated, <laughs> that they didn't recognize and they had the information. They had it. So I'm glad that he went into Nazareth. I grew up in a very rural, poverty-stricken area of Alabama. So he came into that place and got an old girl like me. And I am praising him and giving him glory because uh, he tells us not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think. So no matter where we are in life, God can use us, as you said, he has a plan for each life on this line and every line, uh, every life throughout the world. So I'm glad that Jesus was raised and brought up the way he was because he's definitely familiar with this girl here. So thank you. Amen. Amen. You are also right. It doesn't matter where we are, what city, what county, what country we were born in. He came for all of us. It doesn't matter where we have a trillion dollars or one. He came for all of us because all of us were broken. Amen. All of us were broken. Amen. Thank you. Thank Amen. you for that. Thank and, you. And this, and this is Minister Brenda. Yeah. I want to give you guys a spiritual reference from uh, Jesus' age when he started his public ministry. We can find that in Luke chapter number 2 verse number 23, and it says, now Jesus himself began his ministry at about 30 years of age, being as was supposed the son of Joseph, the son of Hyde. So that is in Luke chapter number two, verse number, no, chapter number three, I'm sorry, verse okay. 23, Luke 3, 23. Luke 3, 23. Yes, ma'am. Luke 3, okay, 23. thank you. And also, you spoke of Moses' age, and you can find that in Exodus chapter number 7, verses 6 and 7. And it says, then, G then Moses and Aaron did so, just as the Lord commanded him, so, the so they did. And Moses was 80 years old, and Aaron 83 years old, when they spoke to Pharaoh. And we know Aaron was Moses' brother. He was yes. his, his mouthpiece, because Moses had an impediment of speech and he felt he couldn't speak. So God sent uh, Aaron with them to talk to Pearl. So we use scriptures re reference when we have numbers and things like that. So people that don't know, it's all Bible. We straight from the right. Bible. I Thank you, Minister Bible. Brenda. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Yes. Yes. Because that, 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 that's, our, that's our reference. And we, we, that's the book that he left for us, I read. So the things we need to know. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. This is um, the and board room once again. Wait, oh, wait a minute, I heard someone else. It was still me talking. Okay. <laughs> this is me, Deborah. Uh, I just wanted to say 
I just wanted to say this one thing because we just finding out that Jesus was four years old. So I'm thinking that when the king would um, made everybody, well, made his uh, soldiers kill the two-year-olds, two and under, right? If I'm not mistaken, I think it was he he wanted all the two-year-old um, mm -hmm. male boy babies dead because he thought he was killing Jesus. But Jesus was four. So did he well, kill no, all those four when um when uh Herod died, he was four. Oh he was yeah. four when Herod died. Yes, right. Okay. I, I got confused. I apologize. Okay. No, he was yeah. four. That's okay. That's okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And and the enemy is still trying to he's still trying to kill our our young man, uh, who the Lord appointed to be, you know, to become husbands and to be over their household. He's still trying to wipe out our young men. And he's still trying to wipe us out as well. So we understand that uh his job is to kill, steal and destroy. But our job is to not let him get away with this. Our job is to stay before the Lord in prayer and in supplication and praising him and thanking him for what he's doing in each of our lives, that we are those warriors. We are those warriors that he needs. What is the boots on the ground that he needs in, in order to fight? Because we're in a war. We're in a war. Our souls are at stake. We are in a war. Uh, is there anyone else? Yes, yes. Uh, this is Velma, and I just want to say, good morning, Karen. Thank you for, Sir Karen. Thank you for um, elaborating on. It's never too late to do what we need to do and to do what God has called us to do. Because if He has called us to do something, that He will bring us through. And no matter what our age may be. We can step out in faith and know that he will bring us through. So I just want to say thank you because I've been contemplating certain things. But this message today told me that God will bring me through it. If he called you, he will do it. So Amen. thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. Yes. And, you know, I'm sorry. I just want to interrupt uh, right there. If he calls us, he will see it through us. But we have to be obedient to the call. Mm -hmm. He calls us at different stages of our life, and we not listen, we not adhere, we don't think we're ready, we don't think we can do it. He knows we can do it. We just have to adhere to his word, to hear and obey his word, and we will have good success because God is with us. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Minister Brenda. That is also true. Yes. That's the truth I have to speak to myself on a regular basis. <laughs> mm. So is there is there anyone else with uh with a comment or a question? Well, if not, thank you so much. I praise the Lord for the opportunity to uh speak with you all this morning. Um please forgive me if I stumbled. Um uh, and lost trains of thought, <laughs> but I uh, praise the Lord. I, I'm glad that we had this time to to uh, go over this lesson about waiting indefinitely, waiting indefinitely. And as Minister Brenda said, to be obedient when he does call, be obedient to his word and do as he wants us to do. Not what we want, but or what our flesh wants, but what he has called us to do and i thank you again amen so will someone pray us out please gracious father we just go ahead sister go ahead sister tell me father we just come before you again to tell you thank you we lift up our hearts with thanksgiving for the revealing of your word for the gaining of understanding our lord 
So, Lord, we just thank you for how you are blessing us and keeping us and growing us on this line. You are allowing iron to truly sharpen iron, and we are so grateful. Even in the midst of Pastor Doug being with his sister right now, who we continue to lift up to you because you said healing is the children's bread. So we speak healing over sister um, Karen, um, Pastor's sister. We speak healing over her. And, Lord, we just thank you for that you have left feet on the ground to carry forth your word through this lesson, Lord, that we are going through. So, Lord, we just ask you to touch every heart, every mind, every spirit, and every soul on this line to continue to grow in your word, to continue to use what you have given each one of us, whether it's the fresh bread or some of us may think it's a little stale bread, but you are the bread of life so you can read life into any situation. There's nothing too hard for you. So we glorify you that whenever you step into the room, things change. Magnificent things take place. And we just glory in your goodness, oh Lord. We glory that you came into places that no one else will come in to uh, get us out. No one else will make the sacrifice. No one else will pay the price, Lord. So we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for Karen taking us through the lesson this morning. We ask you to bless her and continue to grow her in you and give her the revelation that uh, it's not too late. It's not too late for any of us, oh Lord, and we can be used if we're willing to be used, as Sister Brenda has said. So, Minister Brenda has said, so Lord, we just praise you and glorify you. Bless every family on this line, whatever they have need of, oh Lord, you know it all together. So, Lord, we just speak blessings and life and peace and love and joy and growth and iron continue to sharpen eyes. In Jesus' name we pray. We bless you, oh God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister. Amen.